I want to talk a little bit about uranium because Russia uses energy as a geopolitical weapon. Uh, for years, I've raised concerns about the risks posed by being dependent on Russia for energy resources. Uh, in 2021, uh, Russia was our third largest supplier of uranium, 14% of U.S. demand, and every dollar we give to Russia state uh, supports Putin's war on Ukraine. So despite the administration's so-called ban on Russian energy, we're still importing Russian uranium. Uh, do you agree that the U.S. needs to ban Russian uranium? Senator, my understanding is that we are working very closely with our allies and partners, uh, including in the G7, to reduce and ultimately eliminate our reliance on Russian uranium services. Uh, several countries in Europe uh, have taken important steps to reduce their reliance uh, on Russian uranium services uh, and nuclear fuel since uh, the beginning of Russia's war in Ukraine. The administration is, is also focused on this issue here at home. Uh, by working to identify domestic solutions that support our foreign policy goals and address our own strategic vulnerability. Uh, and I would just commit to you that I will certainly be supporting uh, those efforts uh, and looking for ways that we can reduce that strategic vulnerability. In, in terms of strategic vulnerabilities, let me move on to rising energy prices and what that means uh, for helping Russia fund their war, their killing machine. Uh, reducing the amount of Russian energy going to Europe would hurt Russia's economy. The oil and gas revenues make up about half of Russia's national budget. Um, 2021, Russia sold $100 billion worth of oil and natural gas to Europe. With natural gas prices increasing, oil surpassing at times $100 a barrel, more of our allies' money uh, basically lines the pockets of, of Putin. It's a windfall, I believe, for Russia. As a result, the amount of Russian energy going to Europe is a major problem. Is there a national security issue when our allies and partners are increasingly dependent on Russian energy sources? Senator, what I believe we're seeing uh, uh, in the wake of Russia's uh, invasion of Ukraine uh, is that uh, our allies and partners uh, have seen that Russia is not a reliable energy partner. Uh, we've seen uh, significant drops uh, in, in certain parts of the energy uh, landscape. Uh, I think we're, we're expecting potentially to see more uh, starting December 5th, uh, and uh, we need to continue doing that to, to, um, as a part of uh, that, um, not just um, focusing on reducing the, the dependency on Russia, but then providing uh, alternatives uh, that, that can give um, the Europeans uh, a stable energy supply from other, um, from other locations. Yeah, as, as you use the phrase alternatives and then a reliable energy partner, which is what they're looking for long term, uh, do you support quickly increasing U.S. exports of natural gas to Europe to help reduce their dependence on Russia's natural gas? Yes, Senator, I do. Okay. I wanted to talk about what's happening with Ukrainian children, and you've read that since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, there have been reports of Putin ordering the transfer of Ukrainian children to Russia to be adopted and become citizens of Russia. Uh, our, UN amb our U.S. ambassador to the U.N., uh, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, reported that thousands of Ukrainian children have been taken from their homes or orphanages uh, before being put up for adoption in Russia. Uh, she said more than 1,800 children, I mean, it's an astonishingly large number, were transferred from Russian-controlled areas of Ukraine to Russia. I think she said in just July alone, so in one month. Uh, in May, Putin signed a decree making it easier for Russia to adopt and give citizenship to Ukrainian children. And the New York Times had an article in October titled, Using Adoptions, Russia Turns Ukrainian Children into the Spoils of War. Uh, the Associated Press had an article titled, how Russia grabs Ukrainian kids and, and makes them Russians. So, so how can the U.S. and the international community hold Putin accountable uh, for the large-scale forced relocation and deportation of th this program? Senator, uh, what you've just described uh, is absolutely uh, sickening and horrible. Uh, uh, and uh, I certainly commit uh, to, to you and to this committee that uh, one of the uh, first things I'll be doing right. is, is uh, if confirmed, is reaching out to my colleague, uh, Ambassador Brink, uh, in Kiev, uh, um, so that we have a good coordination there on, on some of the, the information 
uh, that's coming out. Um, I think how we we hold Russia accountable is uh, to um, uh, support and and engage in as much documentation as we can to expose these uh, um, uh, uh, these these horrible practices, and then uh, uh, I think uh, to. Um, look for uh, approaches and avenues where we can can um, uh, certainly in the case cases that you're describing uh, where we've had had children separated to get children back to their parents. Uh, I don't I don't have an answer right here for how that is, but I I do think it is very important to have that channel uh, or that have that that um, emphasis on approaches that that look at restoring children to their families. Thank you, thank you, thank you Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Ambassador Tracy.